Breaking news this morning right off the top. As you can see here, San Antonio police on the scene of a situation in the 6000 block of Medina Base Road. It's the southwest side of town. We're working to gather more information. We have a photographer out on scene, but we believe it might be a shooting again. Our photographer, Stephen, he is there and we are waiting to get official information about what is happening here. But as you can see, there is a big police presence. We'll continue to bring you updates on this developing breaking news. But until then, good morning. It is Sunday, July 19th. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday morning with us. And Sarah Spivey, Hi, Max. I Hi, Sarah. <laughs> I am here. You have he to just, look through me to get gets, to Sarah. I know. It's like I, I'm, I'm looking at Max. That's good. And I'm glad to be here with you this <laughs> Thank morning. Thank you. It's very but appreciated. But I'm also really excited to tell Sarah that my driveway got a shower yesterday. My I London told you, you, totally you can't get a, if, with me, if there's a 10%, you can't get a car wash because it always <laughs> hits where I am. It's, it's funny because my, like my grass didn't get rain <laughs> at all. But my driver got soaked. <laughs> well, and that is funny because that's the nature of these very isolated showers and storms. I mean, you can't even go 20 percent. You only have to go 10 percent. And once again, that's going to be the case today. SeaWorld area got radar estimated about half an inch of rainfall. Wow. But at the airport, we got nothing. Wow. So, yeah, uh, so it'll officially go down as a day without rain for yesterday. But once again today, we'll have those very spotty very isolated showers. Sarah was one of the lucky ones. She got a little bit of rain, but the vast majority of us missed out. Unfortunately, it is 75 degrees outside. We got mostly clear skies. It is going to be a hot day. There is no doubt about that. So this is the time to get outside this morning. 72 degrees in Pleasanton, 74 in Hondo, 72 in Kerrville, 75 LaGrange. It's 78 in Del Rio and 72 uh, up in Rock Springs. Now today's rain chance once again is going to be limited mainly to the coastal plain. Areas like Victoria, Beeville, Corpus Christi, Galveston, Houston, 30% chance for some showers and storms. But here in San Antonio, our rain chance is only 10%. So as we continue on with the day, just know that you can bet 100% on the heat. It's going to be a hot one, 97 degrees, only a 10% chance for a pop up shower or isolated storm out there. Hopefully you'll be like Sarah and get a, a little dose of rain on the driveway or on your yard, but unfortunately most of us going to miss out. We've got a lot to talk about, including better rain chances in the next seven days. I'll have a look ahead coming up. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police searching for two suspects after an armed robbery at a local restaurant where an early morning drive through turned into a terrifying situation. Take a look. This was the scene after 1.30 this morning. This is the Arby's in the 2200 block of Southeast Military Drive. Police on the scene telling us two suspects drove up to the drive through The driver pulled out a gun, demanded money from the register. The employee actually tried to shut the window, but the driver able to climb in through the drive through before he could shut it. Once inside, that suspect grabbed the entire cash register and made his way out the back window. Luckily, no injuries were reported, but both suspects able to get away. They were last seen in a Mustang driving off with an undisclosed amount of money. Now to the latest numbers on the COVID-19 pandemic right here in Bear County. As of this morning, th there are 1,108 more cases of COVID-19 and 11 new deaths in Bear County. Those numbers bringing the total case count to 28,633 and the death toll to 251 people since the pandemic started. The city's website shows 1,144 patients. They're in the hospital with 426 in ICU and 293 people on ventilators. City officials report no hospital no hospital capacity improvement with 11% of staff beds still available at this time. And in the aftermath of these 1100 new confirmed cases, 11 more deaths and a week filled with press conferences, case number adjustments and plans for the future. We are set to speak with one of our local leaders in today's leading essay at 8 a.m. and 8:30 a.m. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf set to speak with us live about what we have learned in recent days, the latest discrepancies and any insight on the plan going forward. We have received some viewer questions, but if you're interested in submitting your question, you can do so right now. Just head to caseat.com and search for the leading essay section. Across the nation this morning, more than 140,000 Americans have now lost their battle against the coronavirus. As health experts previously warned, the number only expected to increase. ABC's Ty Hernandez has the latest grim milestones. 
New cases of the coronavirus continuing to spread all over the U.S. The Food and Drug Administration issuing the first emergency use of pooled testing for COVID-19. Four people may now be tested at once, speeding up the process. This as 19 states posting their highest number of new confirmed cases in a single day this week. The death toll in Florida now exceeding 5,000, but Governor Ron DeSantis continuing to push for in-person classes in the fall. And as a father of three young kids, uh, I do not fear this virus's effect on my kids. I think the risk is, is incredibly low. Texas logging 10,000 new cases for the fifth day in a row. A troubling update from a single Texas county. 85 infants under the age of one have contracted the virus since March. First time mom Angelica Wendell saying her two month old daughter tested positive. So I've never like had a, another baby to experience any type of illness with. So when you find out it's COVID, it's just like heartbreaking. 34 states now reporting increases in hospitalizations. The debate over mandating masks still sparking pushback in many states. These demonstrators in Ohio holding an anti-mask rally outside the state house. I don't see people wearing masks and I see a total disregard for what's going on in the world around them. It's very disheartening. It's my body. It's my choice as to whether I wear a mask or not. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Fort, Fort Hood is honoring specialist Vanessa Guillen with a special service. Gloria Guillen cried as she looked at her daughter Vanessa's army photo, the family's Catholic priest, right by her side. He later blessed the armory room where investigators say Vanessa lost her life. Vanessa's 16-year-old sister shared these powerful words about her untimely death. On April 22nd, the 20 year old disappeared from the base. Her body was found in late June. One suspect killed himself and another has been arrested. Vanessa's family says she was sexually harassed prior to her disappearance. You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. And heading to the Pacific Northwest, police in Portland dealing with a riot after a crowd of protesters gathered near the Portland Police Association office allegedly set the building on fire. The police bureau in Portland announced it on Twitter, calling on protesters to leave the area. At one point, officers launched projectiles and tear gas into this crowd. Now, all of this comes as Oregon's attorney general seeking an order against Homeland Security and Marshal Service on an effort to stop unidentified federal agents from arresting protesters. Well, hiker is safe this morning after Texas Parks and Wildlife reported a man went missing without food or water in 106 degree heat. Big Bend, Big Bend Ranch State Park police say they were patrolling the park after hours when they noticed a car was still in the parking lot. The officer and game warden said they saw a park pass, a car rental agreement, a jug of water and snacks, but the driver was nowhere to be found. The next morning, three officers discovered that the hiker had fallen into a water hole and drank river water to keep hydrated. The hiker received medical care on site and was later taken to a local hospital. Time now, 608, 75 degrees out. Still ahead, a Spurs rookie is getting some serious playing time in Orlando. Details on Coach Pop's plan for Keldon Johnson. And a train robbery reenactment, all for a good cause. We're going to explain after the break. But first, let's take a look outside with live cam at 75 degrees. Felt a bit muggy out there this morning, but our Sarah Spivey, she'll let you know your Sunday forecast when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. A train robbery for a good cause. Well, kind of. The city remembers a historic robbery aboard a small San Antonio train that happened about 50 years ago. And now the reenactment is a source of positivity. In 1970, the Brackenridge Eagle train, which took passengers on a tour around the zoo in Brackenridge Park area, was robbed at gunpoint by two masked men. Now that piece of history is used in a fun way to improve the zoo during a tough time. For $10 yesterday, passengers got to hop on board and take a trip down memory lane. They were able to get a lesson in history while helping raise money for the zoo. Officials say this will help the zoo maintain operations that have been hurt during this pandemic. Let's go, let's go. 
instead of real robbers holding you at gunpoint, we have actor educators dressed in full costume asking for donations at bubble gum gunpoint. So bubble guns are being used. It's a very fun time. All the proceeds are going towards buying a new engine for the current Eagle train. There are $500 worth of stolen goods during the train robbery. The suspects were later caught and served time for crime. All right, Sarah, are we expecting good weather to be outside? Maybe head to the train today? <laughs> you know, honestly, the weather won't be that bad, especially considering that we have had to deal with 107 degree heat just within the last week. So it's looking OK and you may even get a free car wash today because we do have a small 10 percent chance for an isolated shower storm. But Sarah got some of that rain yesterday, right? Oh, yeah, I was really excited that my driveway got wet. Yeah, you <laughs> were. It was, like, of, it was like a foot over is my, is my grass. Know. You were one of the few out towards SeaWorld. They saw nearly about half an inch of radar estimated rainfall. Uh, 75 degrees at the airport right now. We're seeing mostly clear skies. Humidity is high. It's at 87 percent and those winds are calm. Uh, right now, temperatures are fairly comfortable. It is muggy, uh, 74 and Tarpley 70 in, Tar uh, in Las Maples, 72 in Bandera, 71 in Comfort in the upper 60s up at Bernie Sage Airfield there on the Kendall and Bear County line, 73 in Divine where it's feeling fine, 74 at JBSA Randolph and 76 in New Braunfels. The airport, however, did not receive any rain yesterday, so that makes it 22 consecutive days without measured rainfall officially at the San Antonio International Airport. We could use some rain, and while we do have a very small chance for isolated showers and storms today in San Antonio, our best rain chance is actually going to come later in the week, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But this is a look at today's rain chance. Once again, the coastal communities have the best chance for some showers and storms today, and even then it's only 30%. Areas like Carn City, Gonzalez, Live Oak County, and the southern half of Atascosa County have about a 20% to see an isolated shower or storm. And then one or two of those will try to make a run for the I-35 corridor. That's why San Antonio is under a measly, measly 10% chance for a pop-up shower. And some of our future cast models do show uh, that one or two two of those may make it to the I-35 corridor in the afternoon. But once again, the vast majority of us missing out on the rain, getting all of the heat. High temperature in San Antonio likely to be in the upper 90s. Once again, we got to 97 yesterday, finally breaking that triple digit streak. Don't think we'll hit 100 today. 100 in Del Rio, 100 in Carrizo Springs, and 100 in Laredo, however. So we're going to see partly cloudy skies all day long, a lot like yesterday. Winds will be breezy at times from the southeast at 5 to 15, but potentially potentially gusting up to 20 miles per hour. We'll spend our morning in the 80s, starting to get into the 90s in the afternoon, and the afternoon is when we had that very small chance for a pop-up shower, stray shower. Uh, 85 for the evening temperature right around 10 o'clock, so a nice end to the weekend, but hot. Now, one of the reasons why we're not dealing with the triple-digit heat is that heat dome has moved well off to the east, kind of over the Mississippi River uh, Valley, and it's also shallowed out a bit, so we're not expecting 100-degree weather in the week ahead. However, we are going to be keeping our fingers crossed for a good chance for rain by Friday. A little wave in the upper levels of the atmosphere and low pressure system is going to move towards San Antonio by Friday, bringing us the potential for scattered showers and storms on Friday. Even then, right now, we're just going for about 40% chance for scattered showers and storms, but that is the best chance we've seen in a while. Until then, it's going to be the same old, same old daily coastal showers, highs in the upper 90s through Thursday. A 10% stray shower storm may make it to the I-35 corridor. Friday is the day that we're going to hope for rain, but there's a lot of time between now and Friday, so that forecast uh, will become clear as we get closer to the week's end. Sarah, Max. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Time now, 616, 75 degrees out. Well, Spurs players and staff members are playing <laughs> against each other on a bubble ping pong tournament. Next on GMSA, we'll tell you who was crowned the champion and what that <laughs> prize was. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is Sunday, so it is appropriate to talk football. NFL training camps are now set to open. League executive Troy Vincent sent a memo to general managers and head coaches telling them rookies are set to report by Tuesday, quarterbacks and injured players by Thursday, and 
Everyone else, July 28th. The league and NFL Players Association still discussing testing for the coronavirus as well as other health and safety protocols. But this seems like it is far from over because union representation cites several concerns in a recent conference call. But technically, under the collective bargaining agreement, the NFL can impose these report dates. And we can't talk NFL right now without talking Madden. Big news when it comes to the Redskins, EA Sports altering the upcoming release of the latest version of the video game, removing logos and the team name of the team formerly known as the Washington Redskins. Because the game is so close to its August 25th release date, versions of it via disc will still contain the name and likeness when first installed. But don't worry, if you do the automatic update when you connect to the internet, that will go away. And we can all take a big breath and smile ear to ear because we have less than two weeks until the NBA tips back up and we can talk about the Spurs again actually playing instead of playing ping pong, which we're going to talk about in a second. Either way, a big name to look forward to, Spurs rookie Keldon Johnson. He is set to resume the season in Orlando and Coach Pop making it very clear this week that his main goal in Orlando will be developing the younger players. Johnson set to get some serious playing time. He spent most of his rookie season in the G League with the Austin Spurs, finally worked his way up to the big boys club just as the season was about to get suspended. Keldon appeared in nine games for the Spurs during the final four games of the regular season. He posted seven points, 2.8 rebounds in just about 17 minutes a game. His best showing though, a 13.5 rebound performance against the Brooklyn Nets back on March 6th. And obviously we wish him the most success. Loved him in Kentucky. And today the Spurs returned to practice, but since they had the day off yesterday and they were stuck inside that Orlando bubble, social distancing from the rest of the world, they had a ping pong tournament. It was single elimination, masks were mandatory, 22 entered the tournament, but obviously with American sports, only one can walk away as a champion. Yes, I don't believe in ties. And here we go. The athletic development coach, Kelly Forbes, crowned the Spurs bubble ping pong champion. Guess his prize. You already looked at the script. You know it. Well, I'm looking at the picture. That's fair. <laughs> what is it? It's a can of Lysol. Bum, bum, bum. I was actually watching clips of the ping pong tournament on uh, Lonnie Walker's Instagram. It was fantastic. I think I could have placed top three. I probably could have won. I'm... I'm oh, kind of really? A dark horse when it comes to ping pong. I mean, I played tennis growing up. But and in ping college. Pong, yeah, and in you, college. You, don't have to, you just don't have to move. You're just like, oh. For those of you who don't know, collegiate tennis player. Yeah, but uh, really just probably future bubble ping champion. pong champion. Ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. I'll get you a little sign that says that. Time now, 623, 75 degrees out. It's a perfect day to cool down with a nice frozen treat. Coming up next, we'll tell you some fun facts about, wait, it's National Ice Cream Day? <laughs> what? <laughs> Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. There is always a reason to celebrate. Today is just a better reason than most. It is National Ice Cream Day. The unofficial holiday falls in the middle of the whole month dedicated to the sweet treat. Take it over, Sarah. I know you're very excited. Oh, I was about to, I was singing that ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice. Thank you, Sarah Spivey. Max doesn't like to sing with I'm me. I'm not singing. Oh, it's oranges. Our origins are believed to have taken place thousands of years ago when Persians put snow in a bowl with juice. Mm. Oh, it's like a snow cone. It was later in 697 AD that the Chinese started to freeze dairy with salt and ice. Antonio Lentini, that mm. is the person that is credited for creating the modern version of ice cream that we know and love to date. What is your favorite flavor? You stole my question. Uh, cookie dough. Cookie dough? Cookie dough one, mint chocolate chip two, mm -hmm. and then probably just chocolate three. Yeah, I think mine is just bluebell. Any flavor. You gotta give me a specific flavor. We're gonna go uh, to break, but cookies, you gotta- Cookies and cream. Whatever, 627, <laughs> 75 degrees out. Well, ahead in our next half hour, two senators are backtracking after posting a wrong picture online who they mixed up the late civil rights activist John Lewis with. Back here in San Antonio, the search continues for two teens involved in a shooting earlier this week. We have the details on the investigation right after the break. 
630 and we have some breaking news to get to some late breaking news. As you can see here, San Antonio police are on the scene of a situation in the 6000 block of Medina Bates Road. That's on the southwest side of town. The call came in just after 5 a.m. according to a sergeant on scene. And here's what we know about it right now. Investigators tell us an SUV was heading southbound on 410. They got off on an access road. That's when a silver SUV started shooting at them. We're told there are three people who are hit by gunfire. A woman shot in the head. She was still talking at last check. And then two men were both shot. A man in the front seat. He was hit multiple times. And then a man in the back seat shot one time in the leg. All three victims on their way to University Hospital, all in serious condition. Right now, no suspects in custody, but we do have a description of the suspect's vehicle, a silver SUV. As you can see, investigators still clearly on the scene. This is a fluid, ongoing investigation, so make sure to stay with KSAT online and on air as more information becomes available throughout the day. But for now, it is 632, 75 degrees out. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. It is July 19th. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday morning with us. But first, we're going to check in with your forecast. Sarah Spivey, I heard you might have a pool forecast for, forecast for us. At I some do. Point this I morning. do. In fact, we'll show it just within the next couple of minutes here. So it is going to be a nice day to head up to the pool if you can do so safely uh, with the coronavirus going around. It's going to be hot and a uh, little sunshine in the afternoon as well. Now, there is a small chance for an isolated shower or storm today, but the chance for rain is only 10%. 75 degrees outside, mostly clear skies at the moment. Sunrise is just starting. And and it's a beautiful one. 68 degrees out in Birdie Stage Airfield, the cool spot on the map. 74 in Hondo, 74 in Tarpley. It's 74 at JBSA Randolph, 76 in New Braunfels, 77 in Canyon Lake, and 72 in Bulverde. So a nice start to the day, albeit definitely humid outside as it typically is. So here's a look at your poolside forecast this afternoon. It's going to be a nice day. We're going to warm up to about 97 degrees. At least we won't hit the triple digits, but this is fairly normal for us in July. Once again, there's going to be a very small chance, 10% chance for a stray shower or storm, all because of some showers and storms developing off of the coast. So coming up, we'll break down today's rain chance and tell you when we can expect better rain chances in the forecast, which should be within the next seven days. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, San Antonio firefighters were busy containing a building fire on the southwest side of town late last night. Fire officials say they arrived to a structure fire on the 11,000 block of New Laredo Highway just after 11 p.m. Arson was called out after firefighters say witnesses saw two men running away from the vacant building. No one was injured. The damages to the building were not disclosed. Well, now to a story we've been following closely out of Kerr County. Three people are dead and nine are critically injured after a car crashed into a group of motorcyclists on Highway 16. That's just south of Kerrville. In a Facebook post, the sheriff's office says members of the Thin Blue Line Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club were riding through the hill country to celebrate the club's birthday when a driver crossed the center line causing the crash. That driver was arrested and is facing several charges, including intoxicated manslaughter and intoxication assault. No more details have been released. And the Bear County Sheriff's Office continuing to search for two teens after they say a 14 year old confessed to shooting 16 year old Moses Reyes this past Thursday. Deputies say Reyes and a group of teens had been taking pictures with the gun at his home off the land's pond when it went off, killing him. Now Reyes's father is speaking out while he was not ready to be seen on camera. He says his son life was cut too short. He took his last breath. He was gone. He just turned white. And it sucks because I'm his dad. I'm supposed to help him. He went on to say that the 16-year-old wanted to pursue a professional career in basketball. The 14-year-old currently behind your bars facing charges of manslaughter. The shooting remains under investigation. Well, in the latest involving the coronavirus, the city of San Antonio is mourning the loss of two more of its employees. According to a Facebook post by city manager Eric Walsh, an Alamo Dome temporary security guard lost his battle against the virus. While his name has not been released, we do know he died from complications caused by COVID-19. The security guard worked seasonally since 2006. The announcement follows the death of San Antonio fire apparatus mechanic Hector Rodriguez, who died Friday night. Rodriguez served the city for 29 years. 
The fire department urges residents to honor Rodriguez's memory by wearing a face mask and practicing social distancing. Health officials in Nueces County reporting that 85 infants have tested positive for COVID-19. Health officials there say that all the babies are under the age of one. Nueces County judge releasing a statement saying that this number is, quote, a cumulative total since the beginning of testing in mid-March. This is not a sudden surge, end quote. Just last week, the Nueces County Medical Examiner reporting a baby boy less than six months old testing positive for COVID-19 died. Now to the latest COVID-19 numbers in the country. The U.S. breaking a single day record of new cases in the last nine, at least nine times in a month. According to Johns Hopkins University data, on July 16th, the country reported its late its latest single day record with a at least 77,255 new cases. At least 140,120 Americans have died from the virus. Johns Hopkins University says with the surge in cases, models are projecting more than 150,000 deaths will be linked to the virus by August 8th, according to an ensemble forecast published by the CDC. And at the same time, COVID-19 infections continue to skyrocket in Latin America with record numbers. Brazil leading with the surge, the highest number of new cases and Global health officials express concern that the upward trend shows no signs of stopping anytime soon. CNN's Matt Rivers has that story. Well, more bad news this weekend out of Brazil. Uh, let's start with the new numbers released by the Brazilian health authorities. Uh, more than 28,000 newly confirmed cases reported on Saturday. That brings the overall total there. Uh, it's now approaching 2.1 million cases overall. In terms of newly confirmed deaths, more than 900 were reported on Saturday. That means the overall death toll is now approaching 80,000. And in terms of these new cases and these new deaths, uh, it's in part being driven by what we're seeing uh, in the southern and interior interior parts of this country. So for example, in the state of Mato Grosso, for, uh, that we've seen uh, some 90% of intensive care unit beds occupied uh, in that Brazilian state. Meanwhile, as his country continues uh, to deal with this outbreak, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro spent at least part of his day on Saturday outside with supporters. He was greeted by supporters uh, outside the presidential palace in Brasilia. Uh, he was seen outside flanked by aides. He did maintain a significant distance uh, from his supporters uh, who came out to applaud him, to sing the national anthem. And I want to read you one quote uh, that Bolsonaro said to his supporters there. He, remember, has been a coronavirus skeptic in terms of the severity of this virus from the beginning. Uh, and he said in part today, quote, unemployment, hunger, misery, and depression kill more than the virus. People are going to die regrettably. There is no way to avoid it. I'm Matt Rivers in Mexico City. And back here at home, a doctor in Alabama who was recently sick because of the COVID-19 says he was, quote, a mixture of emotions from anger to demoralized bewilderment, bewilderment to frustration. Now, all of this after seeing people not wearing masks and not socially distancing. But he says it's not just an Alabama problem. Right now on KSAT.com, you can read all about the doctor's experiences in Birmingham, as well as his message to Americans who feel they don't need to wear a mask. In your morning headlines, the U.S. government says it plans to resume hearings for migrants waiting on the other side of the Mexican border. The Trump administration's migrant protection protocols have led to people camping in unsafe conditions there. Migrants normally wait a few weeks or months until they can attend their hearings, but that has been postponed because of the coronavirus. The Department of Homeland Security says it plans to resume hearings when it can do so in accordance with health guidelines. And over in Atlanta this morning, people continue to mourn the late congressman and civil rights activist John Lewis. In this drone footage, you can see people lining up the large mural of the icon with flowers and signs. Lewis died Friday at the age of 80 years old after a six month battle with cancer. And now two Republican senators backtracking after posting photos of the wrong person while trying to honor Representative John Lewis. Senators Dan Sullivan and Marco Rubio both using photos of the late Elijah Cummings by mistake. The social media posts were later deleted and replaced with the correct image of Lewis. Both Cummings and Lewis were active in the civil rights movement before coming to Congress. Like we said before, Lewis died Friday at the age of 80 years old. 
Time now, 641, 75 degrees out. Well, more than a dozen cities in the central and eastern part of the U.S. could see some record high temperatures today and tomorrow. Coming up next, we'll have the details plus a look at our local forecast with Sarah Spivey. And talking about heat, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. It's only 75 degrees now, but we expect it to get much hotter throughout the day. Saw a little bit of rain yesterday. Not enough. Will we see more? We're going to check with Sarah in just a couple minutes. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Not a happy Sunday for a lot of people out there if they don't like the heat. Over a dozen cities in central and eastern U.S. could break record high temperatures later today. The National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration reports that in the last week, the country had more than 450 daily high temperature records records fall. I know we had those here. Experts say temperatures need to drop to at least 80 degrees for your body to recover from the intense day heat. People can lose up to two liters of fluid overnight through sweating if temperatures don't dip below 85 degrees. Extreme heat has been the leading cause of weather related deaths throughout the country and the National Weather Service says people in 2019, 63 people in the U.S died from heat related illness. So if you are out and about in that hot weather here at home where Sarah, you say we might touch 100 degrees, maybe get up there. Well, we'll get up into the upper 90s. We're not going to get to 100 today. Feels the same. It really does. <laughs> Honestly, Max, you know, your body doesn't really know the difference between 98 and 100 degrees. So, yeah, this is it's important to remember that even though we're from San Antonio and acclimated to the heat, no one's uh, ever acclimated. <laughs> well, not totally. I mean, yeah. especially when you're dealing with triple digit heat. And those folks out in on the East Coast that don't usually see uh, triple digits, I mean, a lot of places there don't even have air conditioning. So the heat is a real deal, and it does actually cause the most deaths of any kind of weather-related anything. So think about hurricanes or tornadoes. Heat is actually the most deadly. So today, though, we will be having a pretty nice day out there. Not too hot uh, in San Antonio, but definitely hot enough. Now, this is a look at this morning's time lapse. So you can see the first light of the day there. Beautiful start to the day. Some clouds out there early this morning, but temperatures are fairly comfortable in spite of the humidity. It's 75 degrees, 74 in Hondo, 74 in Yavali, 72 in Rock Springs, 78 in Del Rio, 71 in Pleasanton, 75 in Gatula, 76 in New Braunfels. So a nice start to the day, and once again, our rain chances will be concentrated along the coastal plain. So areas from Houston to Victoria to Corpus Christi, seeing a decent chance for isolated showers and storms. Now these coastal showers will attempt to make their way up to the north and to the east. So areas like Gonzales, eh, Hallettsville, Carn City have a 20% chance for an isolated shower storm. And one or two of these is going to try to make a run for the I-35 corridor. And that's why in San Antonio we have a 10% chance for a pop up shower or storm a lot like yesterday where we did have some rain showers that made it to that I-35 corridor. That's going to be the case today. But if you get a rain shower, you are one of the lucky ones because the vast majority of us will miss out on the rain. You can actually see that there are some areas of showers right along the coastal plain right now. And this is a look at yesterday's rainfall. Again, some places did get some decent rain. Pearsall being one of them. Radar estimated rainfall a little bit more than an inch and a quarter. Carrizo Springs about a quarter of an inch. Catula about tenth of an inch of rainfall and similar story for Live Oak County. Now here in San Antonio, we did not receive any rain at the airport, so Yesterday went down as a day without rain officially, but areas right along the outer edge of Loop 1604 there on the west side near SeaWorld got radar estimated rainfall of about half an inch of rain. Medina Lake nearly half an inch of rain as well and just south of Hondo about a quarter of an inch of rain. So those spotty showers did occur in some places yesterday and once again we'll have a 10 percent chance for an isolated shower or storm you can see that on the future cast again those showers trying to make a run there for i-35 otherwise it is going to be hot once again, our high temperature should be right around 97 degrees. 96 at Stone Oak for the high, 95 at JBSA Randolph, 94 in Bernie, 97 in Castroville, and 96 in La Soya. So partly cloudy and toasty today with only a 10% chance for a stray coastal shower. Winds at times will be breezy. Southeast at about 5 to 15, maybe gusting up to 20 miles per hour, and expect some puffy cumulus clouds out there. So we were talking earlier about the heat out to the uh, south and to the east 
east of us, and that is because that heat dome that was over Texas yes, uh, this past week when we saw 107 degrees on Monday, that has moved on off to the east. So they're dealing with the heat today and this the rest of this weekend. Meanwhile, our eyes are going to turn to a low pressure system that should start to develop in the middle of the week and make its way towards San Antonio. We're hopeful for some rainfall from this system. Right now we're going about a 40% chance for scattered showers and storms on Friday from that system, that low pressure system. Let's keep our fingers crossed because until then we're just going to have to deal with this daily coastal shower mess that we're seeing and really only chance for a stray shower or storm in the days ahead. Highs in the 90s. Let's hope for Friday. Scattered showers and storms, please, please, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Right. Thank you, Sarah. 650, 75 degrees out. Just ahead, these three teenagers never thought they would become the best of friends. You don't want to miss how one woman is bringing together teens to create lifelong friendships. Whoa. Like most teenage girls, these three enjoy hanging out, giggling, and talking about boys. Boys are cute. 17-year-old Ellie has Down syndrome. She met Abby and Zoe through a nonprofit called Friendship Circle. Friendship Circle is an organization that reaches out to children, teens, and adults with special needs and offers them friendship and acceptance. Nahama Harlig and her husband saw a need and opened a center in Miami. We have children that participate that have fragile X, children that have autism, children that have intellectual impairment. The program pairs teen volunteers with kids who typically are very isolated. We were a little nervous. We were like, eh, I don't know if this is going to work out. Then the girls started asking Ellie questions and the answers surprised them. She's in the same classes. She has like a crush. Like she likes the same foods we do. We play the same games. We grew to see how similar we were to Ellie. The impact on these teens goes way beyond volunteering. They stand up for bull against bullying in their school. They stand up to help other children. Five years into the friendship, the girls say they've learned so much from one another. I think we've learned a lot from Ellie about being confident and putting yourself out there. I love Ellie so much. Widening their friendship circle and creating lifelong friendships. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Phenomenal story. Time now, 655, 75 degrees out. Now here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, coronavirus deaths rising in more than two dozen states across the country. We're seeing overburdened emergency rooms and entire families hit by loss. We're going to hear from the mayor of Miami-Dade where local ICUs are exceeding capacity. Plus overnight, a city in turmoil after months of protests in, or in Portland. Now officials in Oregon are feuding with federal law enforcement agents deployed in the area. Locals describe unmarked vehicles patrolling the streets. We're going to have the latest this morning. And finally, Senator Cory Booker joins us to take a look back at the life of the civil rights giant, Congressman John Lewis. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you very soon. Hundreds and hundreds of new confirmed cases of COVID-19 every day. The death toll from the pandemic only rising. School set to start next month and BCSO set to get tougher on businesses who do not comply with the mask mandate. This morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf joining us live. This week has been full of news, so there are a lot of questions to our local leaders. If you have a question you want asked, you can submit that right now on KSAT.com. Just head to the Leading SA section, and you can see if your question is asked this morning at 8 a.m. And there's only a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm to make it to the I-35 corridor today. Better rain chances along the coastal plain. Now, here in San Antonio, we're going to warm up. We'll be near 97 degrees in the afternoon, but the first part of the day here will be spent in the 80s, and thank goodness we don't have to deal with the record-breaking heat we did last week. In fact, in the week ahead, it's not looking great for rainfall chances. We're really just going to continue to see isolated showers and storms, uh, but Friday is our best chance for rain where we got we'll see some scattered showers and storms so Sarah and Max we need some rainfall I mean everywhere I look the grass is brown and crunchy and we could really use some rain so we're keeping our fingers crossed for uh, Friday of this upcoming week all right thank you so much Sarah. you saw a little bit of rain yesterday but not enough <laughs> my grass needs a lot of rain <laughs> like buckets of it all right thank you so much for watching we're gonna take an hour-long break but we'll see you back here at 8 a.m. 
sticking with that record heat out to the east here in San Antonio. We're not going to be in the triple digits today. Now it's still going to be hot 97 degrees in the afternoon, and there is going to be a 10% chance for a stray shower of storm like yesterday. So the weather very similar uh, in not only today, but over the next few days, 10% chance for a stray shower. Most of us will miss out highs in the upper 90s. Our best chance for rain. However, look at Friday. We've got a chance for scattered showers and storms. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Starting the morning off with a live look out of the Alamo City. 77 degrees to start your Sunday morning. How hot is it going to get today? What is the rest of the day? What is the week going to look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, though, good morning. It is Sunday, July 19th. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday morning with us. It, it's been a kind of busy morning for us news-wise. Very busy news-wise, very busy forecast-wise, especially yesterday. You said you saw some rain. In my driveway. There you go. That's <laughs> what we're all looking for. I need to move a couple feet over to get to my yard, which is very dry, like most of the lawns around here in San Antonio. Yeah, and Sarah, you were one of the lucky ones to get a little bit of isolated rain yesterday. Today, we're going to have a chance for a stray shower or two, but the chance for rain is only 10%. Most of us will just be enjoying a very hot Sunday. Let's take a look outside right now and you can see it's a great start to the day. It's partly cloudy, 77 degrees, definitely humid though, as it typically is this time of year in the morning hours. South winds at five miles per hour. Temperatures elsewhere, 78 in Del Rio, 73 in Rock Springs, 77 in Laredo, 76 in Catula, 77 in Beeville, 77 in Gonzales, and guess what? 77 in New Braunfels. Now today's rain chance really is going to be limited across the the coastal plain from Houston to Victoria down to Corpus Christi. One or two of those showers or storms is going to try to make a run for the I-35 corridor. That's why in San Antonio there's a 10% chance for rain. A lot like yesterday, we may see one or two showers dotting uh, closer to that I-35 corridor in the afternoon, but majority of us missing out on the rain. 97 for the high temperature today. Yesterday we hit 97. Today we're going to hit 97. It's almost a copy and paste forecast this Sunday. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. However, in the days ahead, the weather pattern will be very similar today. But by the week's end, looks like we're going to have a decent chance for some showers and storms, at least the best chance we've had in a while. I'll be back with a look ahead to that rain chance coming up in a few. Max. Thank you, Sarah. The number of confirmed coronavirus cases here in Bear County continuing to surge this morning. The latest numbers reveal 1,108 additional people have tested positive and 11 more lives were lost. Those numbers bring the total case count here in Bear County to 28,633. The death toll bringing that to 251 since the pandemic hit San Antonio. The city's website shows 1,144 people still in the hospital, 426 of them in the ICU, 293 of them on ventilators. City officials report no hospital capacity improvement with only 11% of staff beds still available at this time. And as that death toll continues to rise here, still other concerns many have in the community. In today's leading SA segment, County Judge Nelson Wolf joins us to talk about everything from back to school plans to businesses who are not complying with the mask mandate. Mandate. Good morning, Judge Wolf. Good morning. Good to be here. Well, good morning, Wolf, though. So there was a lot of speculation over the last week over the possibility that the governor could give more control of restrictions to local leaders in the respective counties. If that power was delegated to you and the mayor, what would you do? Would you shut down the city and impose new restrictions? Well, I would not shut down the city, but I would take all those uh, 13 exceptions to mass gatherings and eliminate a lot of those. Uh, those exceptions, uh, you know, run the gamut of uh, sports events, of, uh, of uh, church services, of uh, a number of different other gatherings that, that are taking place. I would uh, certainly uh, restrict those down because one of the great dangers uh, is not going to the business because I think we've got that pretty much under control. But it's in mass gatherings. Uh, there's a report that just came out from the University of Georgia that says if you went somewhere where 100 people were there, 99% someone would have COVID there. If you went to a meeting of just 10 people, that goes down dramatically to about 
37, 40 percent. So these gatherings uh, have really poised a problem. Uh, we did put in place a 10, 10 limit member, 100 in some cases, but uh, there's uh, 13 exceptions to that. So, Judge, as we're going through this pandemic as a community and there's still restrictions, bars are closed, what would your message be to our local establishments, local restaurant owners and small businesses that they are holding on to and they're doing everything they can to stay afloat? Well, we're doing everything we can to help them. I think it's extremely important that they hold on. Uh, we have distributed over a million masks now free to the businesses so that they will be able to have them at their business for their own employees as well as people that might come in that might and have a mask uh, with them. We've given them all the uh, personal protective equipment that they need uh, several different times. We have distributed that and we've made uh, somewhere close to 350 uh, uh, grants and loans to small businesses uh, mounting. Uh, I think we put in a total of about $10 million in Bear County funds to be able to do that. So we're doing everything we can to support the small business, but it's extremely important that they uh, stand up and support the fact that someone comes to their business, at least they have to wear a face mask and at least they have to put in the front of their store uh, to, to symptoms that people might have and, and uh, should not be coming into that store when they have symptoms. And speaking of Governor Abbott, how closely are you working with our state leaders to make those decisions deemed best for our economy, for the health and safety of our people as well? Well, you know, we, we've given him ideas. Uh, we've exchanged uh, words back and forth. Uh, uh, as you know, I put in an order on June the 22nd for businesses to require face mask and set a fine up of $1,000. And uh, he agreed to go with that. Uh, he did come back at May the 7th, May the 5th is when he stopped us from uh, having people wear a face mask. Uh, July the 3rd, he changed his mind. That's two months later, of course, it was unfortunately too late. Uh, but he did do that, which is a very positive step also. He did close down bars. So yes, uh, there, there's been communication back and forth with the governor's office. What about Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick? Well, he's into a world all by himself. Uh, I happen to turn 80 years old this, <laughs> this year in October, and I'm nowhere near dying, nor do I want to die. So I don't think I'm gonna sacrifice my life uh, uh, so that somebody else can make a little more money. Well, Judge Pat, this past week, there are a couple of bumps in the road between the removal of the 4,000 probable cases and the addition of the thousands of backlog cases. Can you explain these discrepancies and how it all happened? Yes, I, I can. Uh, first of all, the most reliable uh, test that you can take is what we call a PCR. It's a positive molecular test that we give at all our sites. Um, it's, it, it, it tests the... Uh, genetic makeup of what you have to see if you do have the uh, COVID-19. The other test is what you call an angiogen test that tests the, uh, the protein that might be there that would indicate the uh, uh, COVID is there. Uh, the state does not report uh, the angiogen test, uh, although the CDC says report them. So there's conflicting information on that. So we began to separate out the angiogen test. And as to today, out of that 28,000, 4,127 were from angiogen tests. We think they're accurate in uh, posting up who has the COVID-19, but uh, to get in line with the state uh, uh, issues, uh, we now separate it out so people can see the difference. And Judge, before we go, I just want to ask you personally, how are you doing? I mean, this is this is a lot for our community. I mean, it's a lot for for you guys, our our local leaders. This, I mean, every day giving updates, every day being briefed. Do you ever have downtime just to get some rest yourself? Well, you know, we we did well. It did get. Uh, we were doing it seven days a week. Now we're doing it five days a week, and uh, it does take time, you know, to prepare for that. Uh, we have a 4.30 uh, meeting every day uh, during the week with all of our key uh, leaders in healthcare. 
and uh, go over all the issues and some of the reports that you were talking about. So it does take time to prepare yourself um, for that uh, for that event. Uh, the, the other side of it is, I think we're all learning how to live differently. Like for instance, what we're doing right now. Uh, I've done as many as four Zoom uh, meetings and uh, interviews a, a day, and uh, I've been able to uh, converse and to uh, talk with uh, you know thousands of people by doing that. So. Uh, from that standpoint, it's certainly a lot more efficient, and uh, I can do it, you know, right here at home. So that that's a big benefit. All right, Judge. Well, thank you so much. Obviously, still a lot of questions looming for you and looming for our local leaders. We're going to check back in with you at 8:30. Go over some viewer questions that we have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And as the judge was actually talking about, clearly still in the middle of the pandemic, and while we can't have a gathering of 10 or more people, people continue to break the rules left and right. And now a scary new study reveals the dangers of an even bigger gathering. So you might have seen this headline on our website at KSAT.com. So it says attending a hundred person gathering in Bear County, there is a 99% chance someone is COVID-19 positive. Yeah, and the judge was actually talking about this. It doesn't even need to be a hundred people, even with a gathering of 10 people like the limit is here in Bear County. The map says still a high chance of someone being COVID-19 positive, a 52% chance. So this is a study done by Georgia Tech University. Georgia Tech researchers developed this COVID-19 event risk assessment planning tool. It's an interactive map that allows users to see the risk of attending an event. Even if the event size and location, the risk level is estimated chance that someone at the gathering could be COVID-19 positive. All right. In other news, we are following this morning three people in the hospital with gunshot wounds. San Antonio police now working to figure out what exactly happened, what led to the gunfire and who was responsible. The gunfire rang out just after 5 a.m. this morning, the 6700 block of Medina Base Road. Officers on the scene say a light colored SUV crashed into some bushes that you're seeing right now on our screen. This is the Valero gas station, and this all happened after people inside that vehicle were shot at. Three people injured, a woman shot in the head, a man shot multiple times, and another man in the back seat. He was shot one time in the leg. They were all taken to University Hospital in a serious condition. Police say victims told them people in a silver SUV shot at them. Also new this morning, police are searching for two suspects after an armed robber at a local restaurant on the city's south side. It happened after 1.30 this morning in the Arby's in the 2200 block of Southeast Military Drive. Police say the two suspects went through the drive through Then the driver pulled out a gun and demanded money from the register. The employee tried to shut the window, but the driver made his way in before he could shut it. Once inside, police say the suspect grabbed the register and made his way out the back of the window. Luckily, there were no injuries reported, but both suspects were able to get away in a Mustang with an undisclosed amount of money. Time now, 812, 77 degrees out. Thinking about going camping soon, next on GMSA, we give you some COVID-19 safety camping tips. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, we are going to take you, tell you if it's going to be a good weekend, a good week to go camping. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. Are you thinking about going camping? But you might not be sure if it is safe during this pandemic. Well, the good news is, is that camping is among one of the safer forms of rec rec recreation you can enjoy right now. But here are some COVID-19 safety tips you can follow when you go camping. Solo trips and outings with people you live with are the best ways to go. Going in bigger groups is going to make your risk a little higher. Here's the thing, though. Try to just stay away from other people you don't know. And if you, you know, make some other friends when you're out there. Try to practice social distancing. Avoid singing around a campfire. Sorry, Sarah Spivey. And sharing food and always come supplied with your own cleaning supplies and personal hygiene products. So basically, if you are doing any sort of activity, just be smart. Socially distance. Wear your mask when you can. Don't hang out with strangers. Yeah, stay hey, Matt, in within your group. I can always sing by myself. <laughs> Beautiful voice. We should Sarah mention that. Sarah loves to sing. Oh, gosh. Thank you. Appreciate it.
I want to sing the praises for the atmosphere today because we won't hit 100 degrees, and that's good news. Uh, we, however, will still be hot. I mean, your body doesn't really know a huge difference between 97, which is our forecast high, and 100 degrees. 77 outside right now, and it's partly cloudy. We have got high humidity out there, as is typical for this time of year. But you know what? We're going to see a decent amount of sunshine today. 72 to start the day at Bernie Stage Airfield, 71 in Comfort, 74 in Tarpley, 75 in Hondo, 76 six in Divine, 76 at JBSA Randolph, and 77 in New Braunfels. A few lucky people were able to see a little bit of rain yesterday, but officially at the airport, we saw nothing. And so that makes 22 consecutive days without rain at the San Antonio International Airport. We desperately need some rain, and there are some hints that by the end of this week, we'll have a decent chance for rainfall. We'll talk about that in a moment, but first I want to talk about today's rain chance. Best chance for rain is going to be from Houston to Victoria down to Corpus Christi along the coastal plain. About 30% chance for a couple of isolated showers or storms. Now, some of those are going to try to make their way up to the I-35 corridor, a lot like what happened yesterday. So areas around Gonzales, Hallettsville, closer to the coastal plain, they have a better chance for rain than us here in San Antonio. But in San Antonio, the chance for rain is a measly 10%. That's it. All right. So you are uh, guaranteed to have the heat, but you are probably not going to see much rain, if anything, at all today. Uh, we'll be around 83, around 10, 89 at noon, 97 in the afternoon for the high southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now keep in mind that we could also have a few gusts of up to 20 miles per hour, so it could be breezy at times. And then a pleasant end to the weekend with temperatures dipping back down into the 80s. So the big old heat dome that was over Texas this past week that allowed for us to have a lot of triple digits in a row has moved on off to the east and shallowed out a bit. They're going to be dealing with record heat all the way along the eastern coast there. Uh, but here in San Antonio, we're going to be seeing our temperatures kind of regulate back to what's normal for a July, so the mid to upper 80s. Then our attention is going to turn to what will probably be an area of low pressure over the Gulf of Mexico, and this is going to be the area of low pressure that is going to give us a decent chance for showers and storms. At least it looks that way right now by Friday. Now, decent chance means 40%. Okay, so far scattered showers and storms on Friday possible. Uh, and again, we'll have to continue to monitor that potential low pressure system and uh, adjust the forecast as we need because it's still quite a ways away from Friday. Until then, mundane forecast. Every day we'll have a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm. Most people will not see rain and we'll see high temperatures in the upper 90s. Then Friday, with the potential for scattered showers and storms, our highs will only be in the low 90s into Saturday as well. So that sounds pretty good, huh? Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, we'll definitely take some rain. Well, it is 820 and 77 degrees outside, and Australia had a total of 10 Ferrari F1, F40s, but now that number has dropped to only one. We have those reasons next on GMSA. But first, let's take a look at our lotto numbers. Pick three, two, six, five, fireball seven, daily four, five, five, nine, five, fireball five, cash five. 5, 7, 20, 24, 30. And our Texas Lotto numbers are at 11, 15, 22, 29, 34, 44. And let's leave you with our Powerball numbers. 13, 16, 32, 58, 59, Powerball 9, Power Play 3. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. Not a happy Sunday if you're the driver of this vehicle. Australia only had a total of 10, yes, 10 Ferrari F40s. Now it has one less. So Nine News in Australia reporting the rare sports car, again, one of only 10, crashed into this tree near the east coast of Australia earlier this week. Luckily, the driver and the passenger not hurt, but the car was, get this, uninsured. Ferrari only made 1,300 around the world. One of those, yes, the one in that, you know, pile of trees, is listed for $2.4 million. And now it is no more. Not insured. What are you doing? You got to pay for car insurance. I mean, it's a Ferrari. One of 1,300 around the world. Yeah. There you go. All right, 825, 77 degrees out. Health officials in Europe are starting to offer rehab services to COVID-19 survivors. Just ahead, how they plan to treat the long-term effects of the virus. 
Plus, we continue to answer questions sent in by viewers about the coronavirus and the plan going forward. We're going to check back in with Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf in our leading essay segment. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Just about 8.30 this morning, Sunday, July 19th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And so far, I think it's it's 77 degrees now. 77, we, what did we start at, like 74-ish? 75. 75, okay, so it's jumped up a little bit, but Sarah, you're saying it is gonna get hotter and hotter today. Yeah, we're gonna get up into the upper 90s. That is not unusual. Uh, in fact, it's actually a little bit cooler than the trend that we've seen the last few days. Last week, we were dealing in the middle of a triple digit heat wave. I mean, you'll remember on Monday, we saw a high of 107. So a high today of 97, not too shabby. And 72 right now at Bernie Stage Airfield, 73 in Comfort. It's 74 in Kerrville, 77 in New Braunfels, 76 at JBSA Randolph, and 77 in Divine. Today's rain chance is going to be limited again to the coastal plain. One or two pop up showers may make it to the I-35 corridor a lot like they did yesterday. Now, while we didn't receive any rain at the airport officially, areas near SeaWorld saw anywhere from a quarter to half an inch of radar estimated rainfall from one teeny tiny little isolated shower. And so again, that 10% chance is going to be right along the I-35 corridor. If you want to go out to the pool uh, today, it's going to be pretty nice. 97 degrees for the high, as long as you can socially distance, of course. We'll have partly cloudy skies. And uh, later on tonight, temperatures are going to fall back down into the 80s, so it should be a nice, pleasant end to the weekend. Looking ahead, we need some rain. It does look like we are going to get a little bit of help from a low pressure system out in the Gulf of Mexico. So we've got a look ahead coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Sarah. As of this morning, there are 1,108 new cases of confirmed COVID-19 and 11 new deaths here in Bear County. Those numbers bring in the total count to 28,633 positive cases and the death toll to 251 people that have died since the pandemic started. The city's website shows 1,144 patients that are still in the hospital with 426 of those patients in the ICU and 293 of them are on ventilators. City officials say only 11% of staff beds are still available as we speak. Now in the aftermath of this latest surge of 1,100 new cases and the aftermath of a news packed week, there are a lot of questions looming for our local leaders. That's right. In today's leading essay, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf joins us live. Good morning and welcome back, Judge. Good morning. Good to be here. Good morning, Judge. Well, we're just going to go right into it. Is there a specific line of demarcation for reopening? On multiple occasions, we've heard the mayor say we reopened too early. So when do you think is the right time to reopen? Do you have any specific numbers in mind? Well, usually you like to see a couple of weeks of, uh, of a downward trend. We're seeing right now about a four or five day downward trend in terms of people that are going into the hospital, which is uh, a good sign that we're having less people go in. But there's several different things you need to look at. You mentioned them early. How many cases are you having? We're still having a lot of cases. We're probably seeing a little bit of a bump up now from the July 4th weekend when we know people are a bit more careless about getting together, gathering in larger groups. We also like to see the uh, uh, percentage of those that have been tested for COVID to go down. At our best point, we were around 5%, and we're running as high as 20% or so now. So we want to see that come down. So there's a number of indicators. Uh, usually it's better to measure them on a seven-day time frame. Uh, so we want to see some, uh, you know, substantial improvement uh, in those before uh, anything else has changed with respect to uh, requirements that we have on the board now. It seems like every move we make is forward thinking. We really have to plan two weeks in advance. So all of that being said, is there a point where these numbers become so high that we have to go back to taking extreme measures? I don't think that's going to happen. Um, uh, you know, it's really it's each, up to each one of us to stop this. Uh, it's each in, in our own individual hands. And, you know, we preach over and over and over again, six, month, six feet uh, social distancing, wear the face covering, uh, use sanitation. Uh, 
if everybody would do that, and, and I think they're starting to, we're beginning to see a little evidence of there, but it does take three weeks, four weeks before you see things happening. We still have have a number of people in our community that uh, refuse to do it. Uh, for instance, uh, when the governor put in place a mandatory face mask on July the 3rd, uh, 40 members of the Republican committee in Collin County uh, passed a resolution uh, criticizing him for that and condemning him for that. But you, you have people like that, and that's what makes it so very, very difficult. Well, Judge, this morning we received a question from a viewer, and this is kind of the topic on everyone's mind. She's a teacher, and she says she's extremely nervous about schools reopening and is appalled by the TEA's response. What has the county done to work with the state on the topic of schools reopening? Well, as you know, the TEA has been all over the board. Uh, we had worked with them earlier on, giving school districts the opportunity to stagger their classes, to limit the number of students that came in at any given time. And we thought that was very important. Uh, school districts are also, were also willing to uh, uh, wait through the uh, month of August before uh, uh, convening in-person classes. Uh, the health director, uh, Dr. Wu, put in place to July, I mean, to September the 7th before school, in school. Uh, learning will take place with some small exceptions. Uh, and so now everybody has to follow that here in Bear County. All our districts that are within Bear County have been very supportive of that. I've had two complaints, though, from outlying school districts, uh, Atascosa and, and Bernie, that do have a couple of schools in Bear County, uh, saying they didn't like it, uh, but I'm afraid they're going to have to live by it. Uh, the school, they're in Bear County, and that order will be enforced and will stay in place to September the 7th. I hope by then... We have really turned things around, and I believe we will. And, but you know what? It's amazing to me. I grew up in an era where everybody went back to school after Labor Day. What is such a big deal about that? Why can't people wait uh, and do it like we used to do it? You just have a little less vacation at Christmas. Uh, so I don't understand some of the pushback on this. Well, Judge, in terms of virtual learning, in theory, it's fantastic to keep kids out of the classroom. But virtual learning also means you have to have the capability to do so. You need the technology, the Wi-Fi. How are you guys working with local families to make sure that they have those mechanisms in place to be able to learn? Well, what we're doing in Bear County through our bibliotheque, all digital public libraries, we're giving out hundreds and hundreds of uh, Wi-Fi hotspots that they can take and take home and tie into the internet with those. We know that that's not the final answer, we are looking at some technology issues to broaden the use of Wi-Fi. There's some legal obstacles to it, uh, but the city is working on one and so are we. Uh, one of these days, uh, the digital divide will be conquered, but it won't really be conquered uh, till Congress makes up its mind that that's as important as electricity, and I happen to think it is. So distant learning is difficult. Uh, if you don't have the connection, it's difficult because the student has to be motivated and I can tell you as a former high school student, I don't think I was that greatly motivated to study. So you do need to get back in school. It's extremely important that we do that. But there's nothing unreasonable about waiting till after Labor Day. We used to do it all the time. Well, Judge, before we go, obviously this is a frustrating and terrifying time in history. What is your message to families, workers, business owners, and community members? Well, uh, it's really the one that we preached all along. Uh, be careful about any gatherings, as you s stated earlier. If you go to 100 people in a room, 99% uh, someone's going to have COVID there. So avoid those. Use social distancing. Wear the face covering. Sanitize. Just be reasonable. This is not asking a lot to do. And uh, I just hope that everybody will do that. I see more and more people. Uh, conforming to that, and I want to thank them very, very much for doing that. All right, Judge. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Bye. And if anyone missed that, we're going to have that on KSAT.com throughout the day. And like we've been talking about all morning, we are still in the midst of this pandemic. Being infected with COVID-19 can obviously take a toll on your health. Some symptoms, though, they can remain months after recovering as well. And to help those who are still dealing with the long-term effects, there have been some new rehab clinics in Europe who are now giving special care. This is a uh, almost like a study they're trying to start up at several hospitals in U in the UK. That's right. So they say brain fog, fatigue, breathlessness, and that's really what they're trying to treat in these long term rehab facilities. Yeah, and they've started contacting several hundred COVID-19 survivors treated by hospitals in that area. Of those, they have now visited about 50 survivors. Wow. And I mean, just taking a look at one of the, the case studies here three months after he had covid we have one patient here 42 years old still experiencing a lot of breathing difficulty so it really is amazing it's not just oh you get it and you're okay after two weeks it really seems like there are wide-ranging long-term effects so what they're doing is they're talking to each patient they're given two half-day evaluations involving multiple tests, a team of doctors, cardiologists, neurologists, psychologists, and physicians. I think the biggest thing to take away from this is this isn't just a short-term disease. This really does have lasting effects, so make sure to be safe, be smart if you are out and about. All right, time to take a live look out at the roadways here in San Antonio. And there it is, I-10 and Callahan. It looks like there is some sort of wreck going on, so if you are on your way to church this morning, doing errands, trying to beat the heat on the roadways. Make sure to be smart. Try to avoid this area if you can. It looks like a, there's a wreck on scene, so hopefully it'll be cleared up soon. 841, 77 degrees out. A surprise collaboration between Selena and the San Antonio Spurs just ahead the new merchandise up for grabs, honoring the late Tejano Queen. And we saw a look at the roadways. Let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. Like we said, 77 degrees, but it is only going to get hotter. A small chance for rain today, but you could fall on that small percentage because we both did yesterday. What? what? <laughs> we'll be back with Sarah Spivey. So many corners of the country struggling. Now, today, how do we regain control? What's the real next step? Plus, the revealing new numbers from the exclusive ABC News poll. What does the future look like today on ABC's This Week? Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. A great Sunday if you like the Spurs and you like Selena because fans here in San Antonio, you're going to get the best of both worlds. That's right. The San Antonio Spurs announced a surprise merchandise collection inspired by La Reina herself, Selena. So all of this coming after fans were not able to celebrate Selena night with the Spurs because of this pandemic. And check it out. The new merch. We got t-shirts, hats, tumblers, a lot of collectible items. Pretty excited about this. The team also announced collectible jerseys that featured the number 71, the reference to the Tejano icon's birth year. You can find a link to all of it right now on KSAT.com. And all of us actually going through it yesterday. It's all really cool. Like the it's designs they did were so kudos awesome. Kudos to whoever designed it. It looks awesome. And as a Spurs and Selena fan, mm. I'm definitely going to want some. Like you most pumped. of San Antonio. Like most of San Antonio. And I think that Selena's kind of brand colors actually mm -hmm. it works. go really well with the Spurs, especially the Spurs throwback colors. Uh, you know what? I'm going to shameless plug. Look at that. Throwback hey. Spurs right here. That's pretty <laughs> awesome there, Max. I don't know. I'm just so excited to see the Spurs play again. Mm -hmm. It's going to be exciting. Now, we did just get the pollen count in, so let's take a look at that. Mold is low at 320. Pigweed is also low at 10. So good news there in the pollen count. Take a look at this morning's time lapse. A beautiful start to the day there. We uh, did see some clouds in the morning, and we've still got some clouds out there. It's partly cloudy, 77 degrees, and yes, it's humid out there. Dew points are in the 70s. And so that morning humidity that we're so used to in July is around. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to see a couple of spotty showers a lot like we did yesterday. Now, most of the rain will be limited to the coastal plain and even there it's only a 30% chance. But one or two of these showers or storms is going to try to make it to the I-35 corridor. And so there's a 10% chance for a pop up shower or storm around San Antonio. So while you may see an isolated shower or storm, everybody is going to experience the heat. You can already see some of those coastal showers developing there along the sea breeze. And this is a look at yesterday's rainfall totals. You can 
can see that there were some areas that actually benefited pretty nicely from some rain. Out near Pearsall, there was a radar indicated about an inch and a half of rainfall nearly, and out toward Catula, some rain as well. Now, at the airport officially in San Antonio, no rain. So the day went down as a dry day in our history. However, out towards SeaWorld, there were some areas of uh, radar estimated rain of about half an inch. Similar story out toward Medina Lake and just south of Hondo there, south of Highway 90. So the future cast does show, again, one or two coastal showers trying to make it to I-35, but it's not going to be a good chance. Most of us will just be enjoying a very hot July day. High temperatures in the mid to upper 90s. A high of 95 at JBSA Randolph, 94 in Bernie, 95 in Timberwood Park, 97 in New Braunfels and in San Antonio, 97 in Seguin as well. So partly cloudy and toasty today will carry that 10% chance for a stray coastal shower throughout the day, spending most of our morning and into the early afternoon in the 80s, but it in the afternoon again a high temperature near 97 and we will have a little bit of a heat index but we should stay below that triple digit mark which is good news breezy at times with southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour gusting up to 20 miles per hour now one of the reasons why we're not going to have to worry about a major heat wave like we did last week is because that heat dome has pushed on off to the east actually areas across the east coast are going to be dealing with some record breaking heat because of that heat high our attention is going to turn to the potential to see a low pressure system, which may give us a good chance for rain on Friday. Now, it is far too early to determine if we're going to have to deal with anything uh, like a tropical depression or anything like that. But the National Hurricane Center has given this little area of low pressure, uh, a tropical wave rather, over Hispaniola about a 20% chance to develop into something and then gradually make its way into the Gulf of Mexico. Again, way too early to determine what kind of system this will be. In fact, a lot of the models are showing us that this probably just be a low pressure system that will give us a decent chance for some rain by Friday. Of course, we'll continue to monitor that as we get closer to Friday. Uh, until then, it's going to be a fairly mundane forecast with Coastal showers possible every day, and then one or two of those making its way to the I-35 corridor. So again, we'll keep our fingers crossed for Friday. We need the rainfall, and it would be a welcome change to our forecast to see a decent chance for rain. As a result of that possibility for rain, our highs are going to drop down into the low 90s. So good news there. By the way, again, it is hurricane season, mm -hmm. and if you want to keep up with us, download yeah. the Hurricane Tracker app. It's a great way to keep up to date. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Love to see a cool down of 93 degrees. 850, 77 degrees out. Well, tomorrow on GMSA, in the midst of the pandemic, your kids are at greater risk for obesity. We'll share some tips to keep them healthy. Although we did have a spotty shower around San Antonio yesterday, nothing fell at the airport, so that makes 22 consecutive days without rain. Needless to say, we need the rain in San Antonio, and we only have a 10% chance to see it today. 97 for the high, so you know it's going to be hot. A southeast winds at 5 to 15, gusting up to 20 miles per hour. But in the evening hours, as temperatures fall into the 80s and we round out the weekend, it should be pretty nice to sit out on the porch with your family or friends. So so looking ahead to rain chances, there is a little bit of hope at the end of the week. Until then, we're only going to see a spotty shower or two, uh, especially along the coastal plains. And then Friday, we do have the potential to see a little bit of a low pressure system swing around some moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, and that's why we're hopeful for some scattered showers and storms on Friday into Saturday. Well, if you don't like the heat, what is that saying they say? Stay out, out of the of, kitchen. Get, stay out of the kitchen or get out of Texas. Get out of the frying gonna, pan. <laughs> we're going to be hot. Why are you in the frying pan? <laughs> I, that's what my, I, I thought that's what people said. Get out of the frying pan. I think that's another <laughs> metaphor, but I'm going to... I'm going to go with you on that. What, what is your favorite rain song? I think maybe we just need to talk about rain more. To, it's kind of like a rain dance. Mm, okay. <laughs> I, don't really, I, I don't really have a favorite rain song. Uh, Wait, no, no, stuck no, in the I rain. Do. I know okay. you do. I know you do. Thunder only happens. I'm not going to sing oh. the rest of it because of copyright thing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, if you like pina coladas getting stuck in the rain, <laughs> I don't know if there's a second to that one. What about you, Sarah? Do you have an answer in mind when you well, pose the question to the there's, audience? There's a couple. But now I'm thinking of, have you heard the new uh, Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande? I have. It's like, rain on 
me. And it's like you get that's really. That's it. That's copyright cutoff. Oh, there it is. Well, can't give you any more. Sorry. All right. So <laughs> do you guys have any good plans? We got about 30 seconds left. Any good plans for the rest of the day? I am going to probably take a nap. Big a win. Sunday nap. Sunday nap. Sarah? After virtual I'm church. Watering my lawn. I need to keep my grass green. <laughs> All right. Sarah, Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day.